If you and your whore book club friends accidentally killed a professor and started dying at the hands of a masked psycho, what would you do? Art often imitates life, and life definitely wants to imitate art. It's just usually not very good at it. Even the best laid plans of psycho killers can fall to pieces when their victims actually use critical thinking and context clues to stay ahead of their game. Not these students, though. Oh no, they're going to religiously satisfy satisfy the dumbest tropes of the horror genre like they're checking off a bucket list before they're brutally slaughtered. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and that'll beat the murderous clown in Killer Book Club. In Toledo, Spain, a crazed woman named Alicia douses her house and mother in gasoline and sets them on fire after exchanging DMs with an internet user called Gacy, as in John Wayne Gacy, the clown killer. I'm not sure why mom was just back there restocking books while her daughter unraveled, or how she didn't smell the overpowering stench of gasoline in this tiny place. But don't run towards someone waving a flame at you under the best of circumstances. Six years pass. Eight college students gather in their university's basement for their weekly book club, and all the infighting that comes with a bunch of people who borrow their personalities from the books they read. This week's book is Killer Clowns, a meditation on cholerophobia, which the club sitting president wants to discuss as fine art. Sure, Pennywise fits perfectly between Dorian Gray and Frankenstein. He wants to impress Angela. Apparently, the cold open of the daughter burning her mom was from Angela's first and only novel, which was a runaway bestseller. But she says the story came from somewhere else. In the six years since, she's only written half of another novel. She works up the courage to send it to her snobbish literature teacher, Professor Cruzado to see what he thinks, but chickens out and deletes it. Instead, she properly freaks herself out with internet mashups of clown attacks. Just mute it and most of that fear will wash right off, Angie. Commander Nerds, have you ever dreamt of leading heroes into legendary sci-fi worlds without risking your own dismemberment at the hands of a more competent enemy? Now you can, with this video sponsor, Eternal Evolution. Eternal Evolution is a mobile idol RPG with strategy, and gotcha elements. It's free to play. Again, no risk to you. That's important, I know. It's easy to play anytime, anywhere, with no energy limits. Unbounded energy. One of Eternal Evolution's best features is their free to play friendly collaboration events, where worlds collide, and you can earn the allegiance of collaboration heroes, like Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex 2045's brand new time travelers. Solid State Society levels Assassin Matoku Kusanagi, who can teleport behind the target. Vanguard Bateau, who can dash into the selected area and fire a rocket toward the area with the most enemies. Support Pure Nozaki, who has an extremely powerful cyber brain hacking ability. And support Tachikoma, who are agile and powerful. These spider-like AI tanks provide support as they advance. Allegiance isn't given freely. You'll have to battle through the encounters of Public Security Section 9. Advance from the Foy Pharmaceutical Company to the Site Fortress, and fight against the enemies of the digital universe to foil Site's plans. Clearing these story stages will pay off big time. New players who start on the newest server and participate in the Grand Ceremony event will receive a guaranteed free SSS hero, Ravina, as well as lots of resources. Eternal Evolution is available on Android, iOS, and PC Simulator. To enter the Eternal Evolution Arena, use my code EESAC2045, scan my QR code, or click my link in the description. After class, Professor Cruzado says he received the email she never sent and asks to discuss it in his office. He tells her to sit and then locks the office doors behind her, then goes in for a kiss. She tries to leave, and when she can't, he forces himself on her, pinning her to the wall. When he ignores her pleas to stop, she knees him in the nards, then tells him to open the door or she'll scream. But when he does, he threatens that if she ever tells anyone, he'll end her career. It's difficult to know what to do in a situation like this. A simple advice of grabbing a nearby lamp and smashing 
smashing it over his head is a harder call when he holds your entire education in his hands. Screaming instead of only threatening to would probably have been a solid choice here. Involving other people could help protect you from retaliation, but as we all know, this world has a way of attacking victims rather than protecting them. Nerds, this is your last reminder that you have between now through September 30th, 2023 to enter into the Ridges Hennessy sweepstake for a chance to win a brand new Ford Bronco Velociraptor or $75,000 in cash. Your next Ridge wallet order might come with the addition of that new Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor. Without spending a dollar, you can enter on their website for the chance to win. You get one bonus entry for every $1 you spend on the site and custom Hennessy products come with up to 1,000 entries. Check this Hennessy Ridge wallet and key case out. A badass design with all the slim 12 card holding goodness you know. Not a fan of stripes? They've got tons of awesome colors to choose from to match your car setup. Very important. With over 80,000 five-star reviews, the Ridge has clearly created a solid wallet. The Ridge team is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 99 days. Not the Velociraptor, the wallet. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. Go to ridge.com slash nerdexplains. Get 10 bonus entries and use my code nerdexplains to get 10% off the Ridge's new smart wallets. Thanks Ridge for sponsoring this video. By the next day, all of our friends have heard about what happened, and for the first time in what seems like forever in one of these movies, her friends band together to help her. Within a few text messages, they've got a decent revenge plan in place. They're going to scare the sh out of Cruzado using their own killer clown. At least all of them, save the one person in their group, Virginia, who they think will snitch. They go all out with this, buying hammer spikes and matching outfits from a Halloween store. How cute. But seriously, buy your costumes from different stores with cash. Obviously, buying seven of anything weird is going to draw unwanted attention. And also, why is a Halloween store selling sharp combo spike hammer ice picks? They gather at school after dark and prepare for the prank. The plan is to scatter across all the floors of the building and scare him as he runs past before Nando and Angela chase him. It's a four out of ten plan at best, with too many moving parts to eliminate risky outcomes. I might have tried to corral him down and outside so we could chase him from the building and leave him to run all the way home wondering if we're still following. The illusion of fear can be just as powerful as the real thing. Even better, have someone plant a clown mask on his windowsill so when he thinks he's finally safe, he'll see the mask in himself. He'll forever know we know where to find him. Suddenly, a figure appears inside a locked library door. It's Virginia. Eva accidentally locked her in when it closed, and now that Virginia has seen them, Rye forces her to participate so she can't tattle on them later. The scare begins as one of them enters Professor Cruzado's office and begins whacking the sh out of everything. The professor runs, screaming for help, and for about 40 seconds, their plan seems like it's working. For whatever stupid reason. Angela hasn't put her mask on yet by the time he reaches her floor. And one of the gang isn't content to just scare him. He breaks Cruzado's nose as he runs past. Now half blind with blood, he encounters Angela with her mask half off. <laughs> Oops. The group rushes to Angela's spot and immediately accuses her of killing him. So much for fraternal loyalty. She tries to tell him that he just fell, but they don't believe her. And it doesn't matter anyway. They're all involved now. This is why a plan like this will always get out of hand. The whole point was not to hurt him, so we can't be punished even if someone finds out it's us. Smashing his face turns this into a serious crime, even before he falls. Plus, there are too many people, too many loose ends who can stay if it's ever convenient for them. You know who gets away with murder? Individual people who cover their tracks, give themselves an alibi, and can avoid bragging. Angela wants to call the cops, but the others convince slash bully her into walking away and pretending it was an accident, which it was. Even you said so. Angela acts like this is some sort of betrayal, but is it? The bigger betrayal was all of you arriving at the scene with your masks off and you not putting yours on, Angela. If it were me, I'd be scouring this floor for cameras. If there's no cameras, then walking away is a possibility. 
If you'd all kept your goddamn masks on, you wouldn't have had to worry about cameras at all. They set their costumes ablaze and swear never to tell. The school moves on, declaring Cruzado's death an accident, or potentially an unaliving. They look like they're in the clear, until a ninth member joins their book club. They all receive messages from a user called The Mad Clown, who's written their scare as the opening chapter of a new book. The Mad Clown tells them that because they killed the professor, they deserve to die and each new chapter will bring one of their deaths. They interrogate and alienate each other, assuming it must be one of them. Rai says it must be the only one they didn't invite to the scare, Virginia. He rips up her horror book and she flees in tears. The next day, the second chapter posts, saying Virginia will be the first to die. Virginia tried to run, packing up and heading for the bus stop in the dead of night to leave her home, as only a girl in a horror movie would do. Buses run during the day too. When the killer attacked, she ran. <laughs> Yeah, so don't do any of this. The last place you want to run is somewhere no one can hear you scream. She was sitting at a college bus stop, run toward the dorms screaming, while you pull out your phone and dial 112. You might still die, but at least someone might hear you. Sabas and Angela follow the chapter's instructions to the abandoned building. They don't find Angela's body, only to be continued. Yeah, I'm gonna call it now. As a general rule, no one is dead unless we find their body. Okay? Suddenly, Eva appears, telling them there's nothing here, but that she knows how to find out who the clown is. The club gathers in the library. Eva says the killer is a whore buff, given how the chapters are written, so they need to find all Stephen King's number one fans on campus and investigate them as suspects. For some reason, even though she works at the library, it takes her all day to print off a list of people who have taken out whore books, and it only reveals that the seven of them are the fans that they're looking for. I guess Spain doesn't have bookstores. I admire the attempt at an investigation, but this is reaction rather than proaction, and it's only wasting time. But we'll get back to what I'd do in a bit. Hours wind down, and Ryan and Sarah sneak off for a quickie while Angela walks off by herself to talk to Nando, who she's been avoiding. Her phone bings with messages from the mad clown, who says they're watching her. She tries to call their bluff, but they're already in the room with her. Why are you hiding in the stacks? Your friends are in the next room. Go back to them. She turns another corner and runs into Nando. A clown mask drops at their feet. He says he just found it. This is like when idiots touch the murder weapon at the crime scene. Even if you found this, why would you touch it? Despite never calling for help, the entire gang suddenly enters the room like they knew she was in trouble. Fuck. How? They gang up on Nando and send him away. Sabas goes to Angela's dorm and tells her he looked at the mad clown's profile on the website where the chapters are posted. Wait, are, are you saying you are the first and only person to do this? He points out the clown only shared his profile with Angela on the profile she hasn't opened in six years. He says this is a clue, but it's the equivalent of someone liking a six-year-old picture on an Instagram account you no longer use. She wouldn't even know if you had and pointed it out to her. Across town, Sarah, Coldo, and Rai head to Nando's bar to party to rub salt in the wound. Rai taunts him and breaks glasses, then steps outside where the clown is waiting for him. Everyone else receives the third chapter describing his death. The clown calls Rai the wild man who's easy to kill because he thinks he's invincible. Is this some kind of fucked up joke? Well, hubris will get you killed. Never mistake a submissive stance for a weaker one, especially one that is still armed. The chapter says the clown burned Rai's body in the pool where they burned their masks, but there's no body, only another to-be-continued sign. Sarah implies Nando or Eva, who is the only one of them unaccounted for, must be responsible. But Coldo's over on his vlogging channel, spreading the good word of the killer clown to his thousands of followers, which quickly spreads across the entire school. He tells them the entire premise of the story, that it surrounds the professor's death, and that students are responsible. He even fans the flames of conspiracy theories about who in the group is killing people, which means either he really subscribes to the bad publicity is still publicity mantra, or he's a dumb.
Rice chapter claims Angela is next, which is objectively not true. This book needs twists, and all these horror freaks should absolutely know she's the final girl, since Cruzado died because of what happened to her. She ain't dying until the end, but they don't seem to know that, so Sabas stashes her in this weird private library saying she'll be safe. She reveals the truth about that novel she wrote six years ago. It was based on another girl's actual life, and when the book became a bestseller, the girl burned her mother alive. Police assumed she also died in the blaze, but it's unclear if she actually did. Let me guess. She's one of the four girls in this group. Sabas comforts Angela, then kisses her, then tells her he's in love with her and always has been. Strange timing, bro. She just told you she drove a girl to murder Sue. But he seems into that, and d it actually pulls. Across town, Nando receives a text from the clown saying that if he wants to save Angela, he'll come to the school of medicine. He runs off like a dog after a frisbee. Even though he's the only non-whore buff in this group, he should still know this is a trap. He should go find multiple people in the group and show them the message. Going in groups should be the norm by now, just in case the clown is actually killing people. Plus, it allows us to be proactive about eliminating suspects. If you take four people, and the clown doesn't show, there's an increased likelihood it's one of those four. If he does show, then you've marginally increased the likelihood that those four are not the clown. I say marginally because I've seen Scream, and you know there's at least two baddies. But really, this is the way you neuter a killer like this. They thrive on one-on-one -on -one set pieces, so buddy up. No one goes anywhere alone, and live stream. Just tape everything, double tap when given the chance, and do not fall for obvious traps. Live streaming everything comes with the added benefit of making it easier to set a trap to bait and catch the killer because you can draw them to a predetermined location. Of course, Nando goes alone, following GPS directions to his own murder. <laughs> Nando, disarm before demasking. It's a very simple formula. Toss the weapon away, flip them on their stomach, and twist their arm behind their back. Post court, Angela and Sabas learn of Nando's demise via a new chapter. Nope, it was a fake out. They arrive at the hospital where Nando is still very alive. He says he was knocked out, so this killer is incompetent or saving him for something. Probably both. They hid every other body, but didn't Battlefield stab him just in case? Of course, since he went alone, no one knows he's been eliminated as a suspect. The next day, Coldo tells his subscribers that he's received a message from the killer, saying he's publishing his book and will be at the book fair signing copies. You mean signing four chapters, because that's all he's written. Coldo says the killer wants people to dress up in killer clown costumes, which he supplies the details for, since no one else knows what they look like. Yeah, so we're not going to this. Obviously, there's just no reason. Instead, let's pay a freshman to run up to the signing table and pull off the clown's mask while video calling on their phone. But of course, they all show. And they cause a scene when the supposed killer starts live streaming, running through the crowd and breaking phones. When security gets involved, Nando and Sarah run off. Sarah hides in a greenhouse where the killer finds her. She runs for the stairs and is actually quick enough to kick him back when he climbs, then sprints in the opposite direction. She makes it all the way to the exit, but she's thwarted by a locked door. How did you forget how you got in here, Sarah? Run and break the wooden slats again. <laughs> Angela goes back to the fair, where the bloody clown grabs her and falls. Sabas takes off the mask to find Coldo bleeding out from a slit throat. <laughs> How poetic. Anyone want to try applying pressure to the wound, or... No? Okay. Seriously, if someone's been stabbed in the neck, you'll need to use a wound packing technique while someone else calls the emergency line. Apply direct pressure to the bleeding point, then take any available bandage, a shirt if that's all you have, pack part of it into a a tight ball and apply that ball to the site of the most active bleeding. Then shove more and more in, literally packing the wound full, and continue to apply pressure until help arrives. Coldo just bleeds to death, and they look up to find Eva with one of those weird Halloween store combo weapons in her hand. She says she took it from the clown that attacked Coldo. Angela faints. The last thing she sees is Eva tossing the weapon away into a bush, and Sabas chasing her. When she wakes up in an ambulance, Nando 
shows her a new video the clown posted of Sabas tied to a chair, telling Angela to come get him. She leaps out to go, but Nando says she shouldn't, then stays behind when she won't listen. Both of you are wrong here. Obvious trap is obvious. And Nando, you can still call the police if she goes, you know? She retrieves the bloody tool Eva dropped and finds Eva bleeding out on the floor. No, don't bother to dial emergency. It's not like she's been clinging to life, hoping someone would find her or anything. Angela walks into the trap room where Sabas is tied. I say tied loosely. Look at that limp singular loop around his waist. He's not trapped, Angela. Use your eyes. He warns her Nando's the clown as Nando walks in. They bicker until the clown finally reveals himself. I mean, he even has that guy from Scream's haircut. He monologues that he's planned everything and that this is revenge for the girl who burned her mom alive after Angela stole her story. First of all, you didn't plan everything, you narcissist. He claims that the professor's death was part of his scheme because he was the one who sent the email that inspired the professor to assault Angela in his office. But what if he didn't attack her? He claims he intended for the professor to die, but how could he have predicted she was going to push him over the railing? Way too much up to chance. Angela waits until he's distracted and stabs. Little tip, look off behind your attacker like someone is there. Then stab them while they're distracted, correctly, in the carotid artery. Then hit them in the groin. Take that hammer knife and end them. Angela runs instead, upstairs, as the final girl handbook requires, where she encounters another clown. It's Virginia, real name Alicia, the girl who burned her mom. Called it. Alicia and Sabas corner her near the exact spot where Cruzado fell, but they're too busy expositing to notice they left a thread loose. <laughs> That statue's a real tripping hazard. Alicia slashes Nando in the face and Angela runs again instead of grabbing Alicia's legs. She goes into the basement, maintenance area, haunted house section of the building, where someone's conveniently arranged an electrocution fire trap for her. She waits for Alicia to enter and triggers it, burning her alive. Nando is rescued and Angela lives to see.